poisonous water in homes across the state. And tonight, our mission is to give you comprehensive coverage of this problem. We're going to show you just how big a health risk it is. We're going to show you how it could have been prevented by focusing on one particular Wake County community where our investigation started. Take a look at where we are uh, right now. We're in Wake Forest along Stony Hill Road. Here it is on a map, and you can see sort of the contamination spread right there. Now, drive through this neighborhood during the day, you can see beautiful homes. Uh, you might call them dream homes. But for a lot of these families, this has been a nightmare ever since they learned a cancer-causing chemical that you're going to hear a lot about called TCE was in their drinking water. Now, we've invited those families into the home right behind us, the Hamilton's home. They're going to watch the story as you watch the story. We're going to give you their instant reaction when we are done with the story. And one other thing I can tell you, in my six years here at NBC 17, this is by far the most comprehensive investigation I've ever witnessed. It started and it continues with our own Charlotte Huffman. I've seen the pages of notes. <laughs> I've seen the phone calls. I've heard the phone calls. You have poured your life into this, and it is clear that you really care about it. Well, it's one of those stories that you live and breathe, really, yeah. Penn. And the more that I dug into it, the more families that I met, the more I realized that something has to be done. Now, we at NBC 17 hope that what you're about to see is a game changer, because for these families that you're about to meet, this isn't a story. This is reality. It makes me feel horrible. A mother's heartache. Michelle Hamilton learned she'd been poisoning her own kids and didn't even know it. I remember where we were when we got the phone call. We were on vacation this summer with our family. Neighbors Monica Stonefield and Francis Kuda got the same call. Of course we were frightened, scared. I was very nervous, you know. I think anybody would be. It was the EPA calling because there was something in their water. They said, don't drink in it, bathe in it, or nothing in it. That something was a carcinogen, trichloroethylene, or TCE. Within days, the EPA set up an emergency command post. Cases of water on doorsteps became a familiar sight. And the EPA called the community meeting to explain what neighbors had been drinking for years. Based upon animal studies, we know that it has the ability to do harm. At NC State's labs, toxicologists tell us TCE is a chemical that cleaning industries have used for years to remove grease. It's cheap, highly effective, and very toxic. It causes uh, neurological problems. It has been shown to cause cancer. I have gotten cysts. Lung cancer. The cysts are very large. Leukemia. There's a lot of them. Breast cancer. In this left breast. Like Parkinson's disease. I have gotten, uh, um, boy, watch me forget what I've got to say to you. Parkinson's. Doctors haven't confirmed it, but Frances Kuda thinks she knows exactly what made her and her neighbor sick, TCE. She had breast cancer. She was a lovely person. She was in her 50s. This is a story that really begins about 10 years ago right here. Inside this shed is where they use TCE to clean circuit boards. Check this out. This is the hole where the TCE came out of the building and straight onto the ground. About three years later, the TCE showed up in a well at the house right next door. At the North Carolina Department of Environment and Natural Resources, Charlotte Jesnick's division took the case. It looked, that the, it looked to be that the contamination was confined to that well. So in 2005, Diener moved on. Is it reasonable to assume that this stuff would spread? Absolutely. Environmental engineer Jim Haley says TCE sinks because it's heavier than water. Same story underground. TCE sinks into the soil and over time spreads through the water table and into nearby wells. And that's when we really start seeing problems with groundwater and drinking water contamination. You and I both know that this stuff sinks and it spreads. That's not hard to figure out. There were higher risk sites that were on the radar at that time. Basically, it was kind of like, cross your fingers and hope it doesn't spread. We've got bigger fish to fry. Until we discovered the greater extent of contamination at the site, yes. While Diener took its eyes off the problem brewing underground, above ground, this quiet neighborhood became a booming residential community and families settled down. And we moved here to make a better life for our family. Did Diener ever notify you guys that there might be a cause for concern? Never, never. No, nothing. 
at all. I don't remember any notice. No, nothing, nothing. No, no, they never, never told us. To find out what Diener knew, but failed to tell neighbors, we obtained 800 pages from Diener's files. Inside, we found dozens of red flags, including a two-page summary sent from Diener staff to senior managers saying there are other wells along Stony Hill Road that should be sampled to check their status. The date? 2008. And that same year, this letter, where Diener admits they don't know how big the problem really is because the extent of the contamination has not been defined. And there was Larry Kusan, an engineer. It just piqued my interest. Kusan learned someone had dumped TCE into the ground years ago, so he ran some numbers. I wanted to make sure that my family wasn't in trouble. Our home is about a mile away from that location. So I sent some emails out. In 2008, he wrote Diener and the governor's office, it is the cost to human health that is of greatest concern and demanded this must be addressed or it will result in harm to some residents, current and future. But Diener admits those warnings just sat in their files for years. So, missed opportunity. It wasn't until six years after TCE was discovered that Diener alerted neighbors, asking residents this June if they would like their well sampled. That's not good enough. You bring somebody up in uniform, in a vehicle that you really know, represents them and said, excuse me, there's an emergency, I need to test your water. But by then, it was too late. Water tests proved the damage was done. Underground, the TCE spread from the source covering 500 acres and contaminating the wells of 21 families like the Stonefields. I'm furious. I'm very upset about it. The state knew about it in 2005. We bought this land in 2007, built a house on 2008, and our kids have been drinking the water for four, over four years now. And no one notified us there was even the possibility that the water could be contaminated. We have a finite amount of resources. There are 80 people that work for this department. You're telling me not one of them could pick up the phone and call these families that were building houses and digging wells? If we had all the resources in the world, it would be a fantastic thing to do, but with the resources we're given, we have to work on the highest risk known problems first. Their kids are drinking poisoned water for six years. It's because they just weren't high enough on the priority list. Again, we have to work on the highest risk sites, and we had sites where people actually had detections in, in their water supply wells or living on contaminated soils. Th those are higher priorities than people living near a contaminated site. I don't care about funding. All I care about is somebody starts doing their job in the world. Your job is to protect public health. In this case, do you think that you did that? In this case, it was not our highest priority. And now this community can only wonder. What happened to the family for all those years when we were drinking that water? We drank it daily. I drank a lot, maybe six or seven glasses of this size each day. It's a lot of poison to put in your body for all those years.